So up to this point, what we've been doing is we've been working on a project that um, is going to be our template project on my flash drive, in my apps folder. I have these various templates that I've been adding to. Uh, I'm going to work with a new template for today. And the big idea for today is that uh, we're going to continue uh, our, our discussion about the um, uh, the graphical assets of the project. Uh, we have a goal ultimately for this project and it's somewhat slightly premature to add these graphical assets. It doesn't matter when we add them, but I'm going to add them to this template so that it can be reused for future projects. But eventually the idea of this app that we're doing together, and you could be working on your own version, once we, once we learn more, is that this is going to be, we're going to make eventually the unofficial continuing education app. The app that's going to be like uh, class listings, catalog descriptions, driving directions for the college. We'll get to those details a little later. And so I would like to make graphics that represent that. An icon for the app, a splash screen, we started to touch on that at the very end yesterday, or last time, when we added an icon to our project. Today we're going to spend a little more time crafting better icons and splash screens so that we can implement them in the template. So as that's copying in the background, we're going to use a little bit of Photoshop. How many of you have any experience in Photoshop? A few people? So probably a lot of you took the IMCP classes and such. Uh, if not, that's fine. We're, we're going to work with a little Photoshop. So if you go to your Start menu and search Photoshop, you want to use Photoshop CC 2015, not Elements. That's uh, like Photoshop Lite. It's Photoshop Junior. We want regular old Photoshop right here. Uh, 2017 is the latest one. And I guess we've got this 2015 version. Close enough. Uh, so. Let's open up Adobe Photoshop CC 2015. These icons that we are creating according to the Cordova documentation should be squares, square shapes. Even though we might have a circular icon like this, one with rounded corners like that, or a square one like that, we're, al we're always dealing with a proportionally sized <coughs> icon you and something with an odd shape like that. Well, these work right here because they have transparency. So we're going to create square icons with transparency. And this is not a graphic design class, but I'll show you some great shortcuts, some tools built into Photoshop to help us create icons quickly. And then I'll show you some external um, resources outside on the websites that will also help us make icons. So you want to load Photoshop. I have a copy of the template with today's date. Uh, I, I shouldn't need to explicitly say this every time. This is one of the things that you'll need to do on your own as soon as you can. I have the template from Tuesday. I copied it with today's date. I'm ready to go. If you haven't done that, you should do that. And so here what we're going to do in Photoshop is uh, set up a graphic. Uh, let's go to the File menu. New. File New. Here, Document Type. Let's change that over to web. Name of our project, we'll, we'll name it in a moment, but the big idea, document type web, so we can deal with pixel, pixel values. We don't really use inches when designing our icons, because an inch, an inch sized icon might look a certain way on a smaller device, it might look a different way on a different device. So we want pixel values. And our size here, 512 by 512. Make sure that's pixels and not inches. 
<coughs> the copy of the template is today they used to be called to the file instead of the file. No, uh, you copy the one from Tuesday out of Z, and then you change it to today's date. And then I'll put my copy of today's file into Z drive at the end of the day. Yes? The, these sorts of uh, templates to get us started off with, notice it says, okay, here is a, here's an artboard or here is a graphic size with an iPhone 6 template, with an Android template, but these are more like to create a graphic of the complete size of the screen. Something like that, yes. Uh, when you're in the app, seeing the whole thing. I only need a simple square graphic. Actually, I'm seeing something here also. Hmm. This might be uh, something to... It shouldn't really matter, but let's do this instead. Let's keep it on default, simply because I see that there's an option that, that changes. If, if we're on the web, remember I said, uh, well, we're going to need a square graphic that is transparent. And there's a way to add transparency after the fact, but it might be easier to add transparency as soon as we create the project. When I'm on web, it took away the option to add a transparent background. And yes, we can probably add it later, but here's probably the faster way. Just keep it on default. You'll have to manually change your units to pixels, 512 by 512, resolution 72, and background contents, transparent. If we don't have a transparent background, even though we design a circular graphic, like the Google, the Google Chrome icon, there's a transparency behind that. If we don't design it with transparency, we're going to get a white background. So our nice little icon is then going to be on a weird plain white background. Uh, the size up here, or the name up here, let's call it uh, 512 icon, 512 dash icon. Just to confirm, 512 icon, document type custom, it goes to custom automatically. 512 by 512 pixels, 72 resolution, background transparent. Click OK. Yes? You need to be perhaps first in default, and then it should uh, give you all the options. So let's change our document type. We're going to change your units. We'll be okay because we're going to be working inside of Photoshop for a little while, and hopefully by the time we're done Photoshop, that'll be done. But if not, we'll, we might have to do Control C to cancel. So we've got a square graphic. We've got the checkerboard. This is the way Photoshop represents transparency. How many of you have never used Photoshop before? Just to get a little sense of that. A few people, okay, it's not so complicated. Actually it is, but I like to say that. Uh, Photoshop is very complicated, but it's very powerful. Uh, so this is a transparent background. It's checkerboard because you can't show invisibility. So it's a checkerboard. Let's go to File, Save As. File menu, Save As. I'm going to save this file to my flash drive. I'm going to give you a copy of it at the end of the day, but for the moment I'll save this to my flash drive. You can save it anywhere you want. We're not going to save this file inside of our app yet. This is going to be a work in progress file. Once the file is complete, we will then export it and put it into the right folder in our app. This working project, I'm going to put it in my mobile apps folder that I have for this class. So save it somewhere and check here that you've got save as type photoshop.psd. This is our work in progress file. Uh, we're gonna work on it, maybe we'll work on it again next time and we want to keep using a PSD format until we're ready to export it as the final version. So 512-icon.psd, save. 
If you get a pop-up about compatibility, just click OK on that. This is to allow you to open this file in other versions of Photoshop. You might have you might be working with Photoshop CS6 or something elsewhere. If you leave this on, it should have compatibility for you to open it. So we have various tools on the left side, like brush tools, There's a little brush right here, keyboard shortcut B, little brush tool, and we can draw an icon, but I'm going to assume that I have no artistic ability. So I'm going to say, this is not a very good icon. We have these built-in, uh, we have these built-in shapes, these built-in icons that will let us create something interesting pretty quickly. So instead of messing around with any of these um, freehand tools, if you see on the left side tools, you have a plain old square, the rectangle tool. If you click and hold rectangle for a moment, you get custom shape tool. Most of these tools have extra features. Extra features are hidden inside of the, the tool. If you click and hold, you get the extra tools. It's like a drawer. I open up this drawer right here, and I have lots of tools. So if you press and hold a tool, you get more tools. You want the custom shape tool. It's right above the hand. So custom shape tool. custom shape tool then uh, at the top on the top strip of icons shows our current shape is an arrow so if I click and drag it will create a nice arrow well I want more than an arrow so I'm gonna edit undo we have a few other icons built in so we've got the, we've got the custom tool I uh, custom tool selected We've got various options, shape options. Click on the triangle, we have some shapes like leaves, check marks, hearts. So let's say I wanted to use that heart shape. Well, that'll be a starting point for my icon. I can change the color. At the top, I have a fill color. You see, when we have a tool selected, we have options, the Options tab. And I have a fill color, shape, and a bunch of other things. But if I wanted, for example, a red color for that icon, I'm starting to design an icon for my app. We have more icons than this. If you if you click to view the the shapes, you then have options with a little gear. Click on that, and at the bottom it says, "Okay, show me animal icons, music icons." Let's say I select animal icons. Click there, animal shapes. Would you like to replace the current shapes, these ones that are currently visible? with the animal shapes. If I click OK, it'll then only show me animal shapes. So if I'm making you know, a pet app, I have here a cat starting point. We'll be able to manipulate these icons, these shapes, in a moment. Well, in addition to simply all of these, you can. I like to click All, click OK, and now you get all the icons. And then I'm going to stretch out that window there from the corner to show that we have a lot of icons to work with. So we can select one or more of these icons um, to work with. Again, I might not have a lot of drawing ability and I need to draw a travel, I need to create a travel app. Well, I've got an airplane icon to start off with. We'll see about tweaking the uh, shapes in a moment. Let me pause there. Did everyone find their icons, their shapes? I can build these up. I can put more than one at a time. Let's say I'm going to start with a circle. We've got a few circles here. So I'm going to draw 
extra circle. And then inside of it, I'm going to put something else, uh, a phone. Right now I'm just kind of showing you a couple of things, then we'll do something for real for our app. Then uh, there I've got, and I'm starting to develop an icon for my app. Each piece that I've drawn most likely will appear on its own layer. And this is one of the great things about Photoshop. We have these layers where one element is separate from another element. You can arrange them on top, move them around, etc. You've got a uh, move tool, a four-headed arrow, which then you can move the items. You have to select the layer. You can move things around. Obviously, you want to stay inside of the shape of the square, because that's the maximum extent of our icon. Anything outside of it will get cut off. And if you're, if you're drawing your shapes and you make them that big, again, this whole shape here, this whole square, is the maximum size of our icon. That's a bad icon. <laughs> the design of it is okay, but it's a bad icon because you're wasting all of this space. When this gets shrunk down to the size of your device, there's going to be a little little icon with a lot of empty space. So if you drew your shape the wrong size, you could drew, what you could do is the, the fastest way is, is you memorize the keyboard shortcut control T to transform it so you can change the size. So I made my circle too small. I'm going to select my circle layer. I see the preview of it down there. Then I'll press control T for transform. And then I want to make my icon larger. And then I have to press the check mark. I have to confirm or commit the change up there. Box around here. Once you manipulate it, grow it, shrink it, rotate it, then you confirm. For the moment, I'm just kind of playing around with some uh, shapes. And then to make it look a little bit more interesting, I can apply styles, uh, like drop shadows, uh, embossing, reflections, and things. We can get that out of, there should be a panel called Styles. I see it here under Library Adjustment Styles. If you don't see the panel called Styles, you can go up to the Window menu, and uh, any panel that is hidden, you can find it under Window, Styles. So for example, if I select the my circle shape, and I click one of these styles, like that. Well, I started off with a very simple flat color, and now it's got some 3D, some depth to it. Maybe it can go with this one, and it adds another effect. I select my other shape, the, the phone shape, and I, I can add a different one if I want. Of some basic shapes, then we're adding some effects, and then your, your layers down there will <coughs> reflect that. <coughs> your layers down here will show, well, what you've done is you've, um, you've added effects. There was a, and a bevel and emboss, plus a satin effect, plus a gradient overlay effect, plus a drop shadow. It's like a recipe that was put together very quickly on these effects. If you want to really, really tweak these effects, you can double click 
if I want a different kind of gradient or drop shadow, you can double click these to get a screen with many more effects. There's a lot of complexity on these things that you can spend all your time playing with to figure out. You can put it all back to plain with the default style of none. And there's a few styles here. There's also a few more uh, hidden if you go in your Styles panel to the Hamburger menu. Uh, actually, that one has hamburger and, uh, and lettuce as well, because it's got four lines. Uh, so if you click on that one, uh, and then you go over here, you'll see uh, abstract styles and buttons and other things. So go to the, the Hamburger menu of Styles. They had a gear elsewhere, and they got a hamburger here. So anyway, click on the options for Styles, and you've got other styles that you can that you can load up. If I do abstract again, it'll say, would you like to replace the ones existing? Or append, which is add to the ones that exist. Just click OK. So I've got a few other ones. Abstract. You can go to look at glass buttons. So all of these are about adding like the glass effect. KS styles, these are the really crazy, weird, fun ones. If you go to KS styles, you get something like that. Get this one. And all of these interesting ones. I think they're way too over the top, most of them for an icon, but uh, the sky's the limit with, with design. Textures. As we are using built-in shapes and as we use styles, we can further refine these shapes, we can further tweak these shapes. We have a tool that will let us affect these shapes. I keep calling them shapes because they are mathematically constructed elements. There are control points that define the curve here the length of the straight line there. There are control points that we can affect to make it more rounded, more straight. We can maybe move the phone higher up. We have a way to manipulate that. We have a tool. At the very bottom, where we had the custom shape, we have the path selection tool, a black arrow. That one lets you select the shape itself. If you click on the shape, you can manipulate it a little bit. But better is if you click on the... Um, if you click and hold on that um, select tool, you have direct select tool. That one will let you manipulate the individual points that this element is made out of. So this one will work better if you click and hold. Instead of path selection, you want direct selection. And the way that works is if you then click on one of the shapes, all of its control points are revealed. So things I can do is like move this control point down here, and then now the shape of the thing that I'm working with changes. So I started off with a certain kind of shape built in, and now I'm starting to change it. And it's starting to look like a robotic dog to me. Now you can't unsee it. But with this direct selection tool, the white arrow, we're able to manipulate these points. <clears throat> you click on the shape, they reveal, you click on a point, and then you can manipulate. You're going to get really weird results if you've never used this before. And again, Photoshop is complex. We, we don't really have time to go into all the nuances of uh, the pen tool and all of that. But if you've taken our other classes or explored Photoshop on your own, um, 
this is your time to, to get creative. So what we'll do is I'll give you a couple of moments to play around with some of these shapes and colors and styles and things, just to play with it a moment. Then I'll show us some other uh, quick ways to create icons and then show you eventually, well, we've created an icon, how do we add it to our project? We'll get to that. So just take a moment to play with Photoshop for a bit. Uh, there's a lot to learn, of course. If you need something, call me over, but give it a shot for a moment. This is what we can create. Let me be there one moment. So as we work on these uh, icons, the, uh, the possibilities to create uh, just about anything are, are pretty endless, assuming you have some idea or artistic ability or command of the software. Well, the uh, icons that we looked at here can get us started. And uh, I'll show you another resource here. If you go to your web browser, there is an open source project with a bunch of uh, icons that we can use, that we can import into Photoshop and then change them as, as we want. If you go to emoji1.com, O-N-E, emoji1. If you go to emoji1.com, this is an open source emoji library. So emoji, of course, are those little icons that everyone sends to each other, little faces and hearts and faces with hearts and dollar symbols and faces with dollar symbols and all of that. So get emoji1 
is a project that is creating an open source version. Because the most famous version of emoji is the Apple one, even though every uh, phone manufacturer basically has their own version. There's the Samsung version, there's the generic Android version, there's the Twitter version, there's the Apple version. But this is a project that is trying to be like a universal one, which if you're used to the, the Apple emoji, these, these will look all weird and different. Um, but all of these are related to open source, and it's got all of these types of common icons which we then can manipulate. So if I want to start off with this icon and change it, or build a couple of icons together, You mess with those on Photoshop? Yeah, we'll see how to do that in a moment. It looks like here now they've got a way for us to what is what did I just see here? Emoji one two three ships with Photoshop CC. Adobe selects as the first emoji font to ship. Huh? So it looks like we might be able to open it directly in Photoshop now. I hadn't seen this. Let me take a quick look. It looks like they'll probably give us some sort of library. How to use the new emoji. Now this is Photoshop 7, 2017, we've got 2015. Probably have a way to open it in our version, but... Is there any text documentation for that? So there's a way if uh, if I hear the video, it might tell us how to do it. We might not be able to do it with Photoshop 2015. We've got 2015, and this seems to say 2017. Uh, so here's the other way to use this. I think From here? Yeah, the, this is the this is the other way uh, that we're going to look at. But it looks like 2017 has it built in, and here's the way that we can do it the old-fashioned way. So the old-fashioned way is here on the Emoji One site, we scroll down and we have the gallery of all the icons. And we can see them in, the, in different views. You know, this this little heart envelope would be great for my for my icon, for my app, let's say. But the way we would do this is you scroll down, you find the icon that you like, and then um, this cat one would be useful, let's say. You click on one and then it's going to show you here in a couple of ways, as a ping file and as an SVG. Ping is already resized kind of to what we need, 512 by 512. If we would, for various reasons, need even more higher quality, or if we further wanted to manipulate the icon with control points, we would need the SVG version. This ping version is not as easily editable. It's, it's a complete file. The SVG version does give you the, the complete editable version. Now, I, I don't think we can open SVG directly in Photoshop 2015. If someone wants to try it, or I'll try it right now. Hmm? Illustrator. Definitely Illustrator, but that's a whole other can of worms. So I think with Photoshop 2017, we might be able to open an SVG graphic. Would you recommend for future projects to Photoshop or Illustrator? Maybe the better answer is Illustrator, but again, that's a whole can of worms. So if you have experience in Illustrator, that might be better because it is vector-based. Although Photoshop has their own version of vector-based tools, which are pretty okay. So either or. Yes, let me just confirm one thing. I'm going to try to open the SVG version in Photoshop. And it seems to rasterize it, so we would need to use Illustrator for the full effect. 
Okay, so anyway, uh, here's what we want to do. You want to browse around the Emoji One library, and let's say you find the icon that you'd like to use. You're going to click on the ping version, the PNG. Depending on your browser, it may simply download it, or it may pop up to ask you what would you like to do. I want to download it. Mine is named 1F63A, so it downloaded to my desktop. And to get it into Photoshop, I need to import it or, or place it. So, on, in Photoshop, uh, we can do File, Import, and we'll do Place. Let's do File, Place, Embedded. I'm going to go with ping. I, I opened the SVG and it wasn't really editable, so I'll go with ping. Do file place embedded. What that's going to do is copy our ping file directly into Photoshop project. If we did linked, it would still be separate. We want to combine them together. So file place embedded and find your graphic that you downloaded. There's mine. It's imported. It can still be resized. You get you get these control points on the edge. But after you import it, you most likely want it that full size, and you can click the check mark on the top. We pop the graphic in. I have a new layer. These other two layers, maybe I don't need them. You can either select a layer you don't want and delete it, or just hide it. Click the eyeball. If you hide a layer, it's not visible, it, and it doesn't show up once we export. So maybe I do want those shapes for something for later, so I'll just hide the other layers. And I have these icons. The icons are high quality, they're pretty well designed. If you want to make changes to them, the best way would be an illustrator, but something we can do is at least kind of recolorize them. We can do this. You can go to Image Menu, Adjustment, Hue and Saturation. This will let you shift the colors of the icon that you brought in so it doesn't look exactly like the original. Image menu, adjustments, hue and saturation. When you slide these around, you get different colors depending on your icon. You also have the ability to colorize it. If you click colorize, Maybe I can build an icon out of more than one of these emojis. So the same thing, I can go back to emoji1.com, download another one, file uh, place embedded, and I've got a different element. Over here on your layers, you should be able to poke the little eye next to the layer to hide the layer.
If your layers panel is missing, you can go to the window menu. Now we have a size of a graphic of 512 and the reason we started this large is because we want to have the leeway to have our graphic resized for us depending on the device. This icon right here that I'm designing uh, might look really good for a uh, a large phone but then on a small phone I lose the details like the hat right here so imagine that at a certain point the icon might be that small so you can't you can't quite see what does that have that hat and if I'm on a different kind of a device uh, I can see it so we we want to start with a large size because in the world of graphic design uh, especially web design when we start with a large graphic and it gets resized down, the quality is maintained pretty well. But when we start with a small graphic and resize it bigger, usually the quality suffers a lot. Maybe you've seen a website where there's like a really blurry graphic. Well, most likely it was a small graphic that was blown up and it looks bad. This happens a lot also in the real world. There's been to, I've been to so many like uh, restaurants and things where their menu, I'm looking at the menu and the food looks blurry because they had a low quality graphic that looked good on the computer but when they printed it, it looks blurry. The way to fix that is you start with graphics that are big and then size them to what you need, not small and grow them. That's always a problem. So even though I'm thinking about using this large size, I also have to think how does it look like really small? And one way to kind of play with that is, right now we're on 100% zoom. On the keyboard, if you press Control minus, it zooms out. Control plus zooms in. So if you do Control minus, maybe down to 8 or so, that'll give you a representation, an approximation of how it may look on an even smaller device. Control minus zooms out, control plus zooms in. You can also use control scroll wheel. So on your mouse, if you hold control and then do the scroll wheel, or actually alt, if you hold alt and scroll wheel, you can zoom in and then see all the individual dots that this is made out of. Alt scroll or control plus control minus. <coughs> so either using your freehand brush tools and such, or using your shapes, or using styles, or using emoji one, you can um, create an icon. We're going to take our first break. If you'd like to, you can uh, keep playing with this. We will eventually want to have something to export, and then we'll add it to our app in a moment. And this can be changed whenever. This is not, this is, I love this icon, but it's not a great icon for our app. It's, it's not the right kind of icon for the app we're going to make eventually. I'm going to add this to my project, and then later I can change it to be the real icon. But I want to show the procedure first, and then we'll, we'll see it. Let's take a break at 7.12. We'll be back at 7.22.